Today's video was brought to you by Aniba.com. Aniba.com is a digital marketplace with over 20,000 digital products. And with an ever expanding library, it's the go to point for all your gaming needs. Check out is simple, just add a selected game to your basket, select the payment method of the choice, whether that be Trustly or PayPal, etc. Once payment has been accepted, you can then confirm if the key is from the correct platform and the correct region. Copy your code. This code is a Steam key, so all you have to do is go to Games and then Product Activation, paste in your key, and then you'll add your new game to your library. Very simple. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I'll be looking at undervolting your GPU. I'll be using my MSI RTX 4090 from NVIDIA. Now, undervolting is something that you may have multiple reasons why you want to do it. Maybe you're not happy with the temperature of your GPU. You want to kind of shave a few degrees off. So undervolting will help do that. Maybe you want to run a slower or quieter fan profile, or you maybe you just want to save some power on your GPU power draw and you're not happy with how much power it's drawing. And I would understand that, especially with a card like the RTX 4090, because it is quite power hungry if you allow it to draw as much as it wants. Now, to do this, you will need uh, some software. So MSI Afterburner is recommended. I'll leave a link into the description box or a pinned comment in the comment section just so you guys can get to it quick. I'll also advise to have a GPU Z as well. You can kind of use this very quickly to confirm if your settings are active or successful. So um, what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you how you undervolt your GPU. Now, you should kind of have an idea of what your core clock will boost to by default out of the box. If you want to confirm how much your card draws or what kind of voltage point it's at out of the box, if you go to the sensor tab on GPU Z, there's a uh, tab called GPU voltage. Right now you can see it's using 0 0.870 volts because it's basically at idle. Now if I was to run like a 3D application like uh, Unige in Heaven, just gonna quickly get this to run because it will just put my GPU on the load very quickly. If I just put GPU Z up, you can see that my GPU out the box uses 1.050 volts. So that's how you can kind of confirm just how much voltage your card uses without making any modifications yourself. So what I aim to do is to um, undervolt this MSI RTX 4090 down to 0 0.950 volts. To do that, once you've installed MSI Afterburner, what you want to do is set a core clock that you're happy with. Um, for me, I know my GPU core clock will, will be stable at 135 at a bare minimum. So I'm going to put 135 into the core clock here. And you don't have to overclock your memory if you don't want to, but I'm quite... I'm comfortable with my card doing 1285 on the memory. And GPU power limits just basically allowing your GPU to draw as much power as it can before it hits its cap. This is something that varies between uh, the version of the card or the BIOS you're using. My card has a 520 watt um, power limit and me increasing that to 108% allows me to use that power limit completely. So Realistically, my core clock should remain stable without any fluctuations as long as the heat is under control as well, as long as I remain under 520 watts. So you don't have to increase this, but if you want stable clocks, this may help. So now that you've inputted your core clock that you're happy with, um, all you got to do is click this icon here. This will bring up the uh, voltage and frequency curve editor. Now you can also press Control and F as a shortcut if you don't want to, if you can't find it on your uh, MSI Afterburner, because this is a different layout. Um, they don't all always look like this. This is something I've selected. And um, as you can see at the very, very bottom, you can see all of these voltage points, maximum 1250 and the minimum being 700. We already established that my card out the box uses 1050 volts. But we want to undervolt that and I'm going to try for 0 0.950. So all you do is select this voltage point. 
I've clicked it once, that's all you need to do. So now you've selected 9, 0 0.950 as a voltage point, but you can see all of these voltage points are a lot higher than 0 0.95, so you wanna bring these in line. What you do is you hold shift and you just click and highlight all of the voltage points um, to the right of the one that you've selected and you let go of shift and you let go of um, left click and then you press left click again on the nearest voltage point which would be 0 0.960 and then you just hold it and drag it all the way down to the bottom and then you click this tick which is basically apply and as you can see now all of the voltage points are no longer exceeding 0 0.950 and the core clocks are all in line. So this, sh this shouldn't crash my GPU trying to boost to something that I haven't um, selected. So this will obviously make your card a lot more stable if you do this. So we've now undervolted the GPU to 0 0.950 volts. We can confirm that again by running a quick load on my GPU. So this is Unigine in heaven. Can also leave a link to this as well if you're interested. As you can see now, my GPU is now using a voltage of 0.950 volts. So that undervolt is successful. Now, you may not be happy with the core clock you're now running at, even though you've, you're using less voltage, you may still wanna increase that core clock. So I started at 1.3, 135 megahertz. You can just keep increasing that until your card loses stability. All cards are different due to silicon lottery. Um, your card may boost 60 to 70 or even more megahertz at the same core clock and the same model and um, that's just the way it is unfortunately you can either get lucky or you can get very unlucky now, my card isn't the best um, sample to be honest but it, it, it does a good job it can reach 3 gigahertz if I really push it so anyway I'm gonna run a comparison now with um, my card under voltage to 0 0.950 volts with a, an overclock and I'm also going to run the card at its stock voltage which is 1.050 and I'm going to do a manual overclock on that as well and uh, let's just see the difference in power usage and performance and you guys can kind of make up your own minds is it worth doing or um, is this something that you might be interested in so enjoy the rest of the video.